Fifth experiment. Force on a current carrying conductor. Current balance. In this experiment, force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field will be examined. This is the apparatus which will be used as the conductor. There are interconnected wires on this apparatus. There is another apparatus which will be fixed on the support to connect the wires to the circuit. On this apparatus, each slot is named with a letter. The effective horizontal length between slots that can be connected is indicated on each slot. So, when these are connected to the circuit, the effective length of the wire used is known. The apparatus are connected in this manner. Assume you connect the cables to any two of the slots. The horizontal length of your wire is indicated here. Fix these apparatus on the support to an appropriate height. You have two magnets fixed on an insulator. The wire affected by the magnetic force will be lying between these. Place the magnets and adjust the height of the wire. After that, you should check the position of the magnets. The wire should lie in the middle of the magnets. Here, you do not have a uniform magnetic field distributed over all space, but the length of the magnets is sufficiently larger than their separation. So you can assume that the wire is lying in a uniform magnetic field. You will measure the force affecting the wire using this balance. Turn on the balance. In order to understand how it operates, take the magnets off. Now it displays the weight of the magnets with minus sign. Now press on the tear button and place the magnets again. It again displays the weight of the magnets, this time with the correct sign. Press on the tear button again. Connect the power supply to the setup. Now choose a fixed length, for example, 5 cm. Turn on the power supply and adjust an arbitrary value. Since the magnetic field is uniform, the force acting on the wire depends on the current and the length of the wire. Since the directions of the current and the magnetic field are perpendicular in this setup, the force will point either upwards or downwards. It is expected that current and force are directly proportional. Record the value of the current corresponding to this force. Change the value of the current and record the new value with the corresponding force. After recording a sufficient data, plot your data placing current on the horizontal axis and force on the vertical axis respectively. The theoretical expectation is that the slope of the best line is equal to the field strength times the length of the wire. Since the length is known, you can calculate the field strength using this slope. Turn off the power supply. Now examine the relation between force and length of the wire. First, choose a fixed value of current and change the length of the wire. For example, set it to 1 cm. Let the value of the current be 1 ampere. Force on a wire carrying 1 ampere current and having 1 cm length can be read on the display. Turn off the power supply and readjust the length. Now it is 2 cm. Send the 1 ampere current to the circuit again. Record the length and the corresponding force. This way, you can examine the relation between length and force by making use of a plot. Since the value of the current is known, field strength can be calculated using the slope of the force versus length graph. Now let us give some details on force readings. The unit of the measurements of this balance is gram force. Its error is indicated on the display. 
The measurements are carried out as if some weight is placed on the balance, which does not exceed a certain value. You can perform unit conversion by multiplying it with gravitational acceleration and use the converted values in your plots.